So you want to be a dice maker? Great, you've come to the right place. My name is Sam. I am the owner and dice maker over at Artemis Dice Company. I have been making dice for a little over two years, and I have a pretty decent following over on TikTok and Instagram. One of the questions I get asked the most frequently on my social media platforms is how people can get started in dice making. Unfortunately, this is not the easiest question to answer in short form videos. So I've decided to hop on over to YouTube so I could do some really great in-depth tutorials and help people dive into the world of dice making. While I am by no means an expert, I do think I've been working in this field long enough to be able to provide some insight to people who want to get started in dice making. I am going to be starting with the very basics. So if you're more of an advanced beginner or an intermediate dice maker or even resin worker, some of these first videos might be a little boring to you, but stick with me. I promise I'm going to get into some fun stuff as well. I just want to start with the very basics so that everybody can follow along. Along this journey, I'm going to try to reach out to the community. I would love to hear any questions you have about dice making so that I can answer them. And eventually we're even going to make a set of dice together that I will, when it is complete, give away to one of you. I want to first go over what you are going to need to become a dice maker. We're going to start with the bare minimum because this can be a really expensive hobby. And if you're not prepared for that cost, it can be really daunting, but you can cut some corners in the very beginning. My first ever set of dice I made was made out of an old eyeshadow palette because I didn't want to buy any colorant until I knew I liked this hobby. So there's definitely ways to get around it. And I will talk about that. I'm also going to link almost all the materials in the description below. They are Amazon affiliate links and you obviously do not have to buy what I am recommending, but I did want to recommend items that I actually use in my everyday life to get started. All right. Are you ready to learn how to make some dice? Let's go. First, you're going to need one of these. Respirator with cartridges that filter out VOCs or volatile organic compounds. The next thing you're going to need is a pair of nitrile gloves. It's pretty obvious that you're going to need is resin, some mixing cups of some sort, and something to stir your resin with. You can just use wooden popsicle sticks. I do like these silicone ones because they're reusable. I apologize that this one is so gross. I thought I had a new one and I did not. Any kind of silicone mixing cup will do. I do like this size as opposed to the larger ones because I find the measurements a little more accurate. And the ones I have linked down below are actually these ones because I love that the lines are dark. They're in black. I find the measurements are so much more accurate when you can actually see them. The next thing I would definitely recommend you having is some type of a silicone mat or you could use wax paper or parchment paper, just something so that you don't destroy your workspace. But I would highly recommend something silicone because otherwise if that resin gets stuck on your table, you're never going to get it back off. And I guess this is technically not like a major requirement, but I highly recommend you get some 91% isopropyl alcohol. This cleans up resin better than anything else I have found on surfaces and it's like a buck. So, you know, not essential, but just get this. You will absolutely need some type of mold for making your dice. This is just a standard seven piece mold that I made. I actually recommend that you get started with just a single D20 mold. Something like this from Werpy Dice is perfectly acceptable. If you want to start with something a little bit bigger, this is a D20 chunk mold. I made this one, but Nano Lab Maker does sell 30 millimeter chunk molds if you want to start with a little bit of a bigger surface. But the investment on even just one of these molds is so much less than a full slab mold. And if you just want to see if you like this before dumping a lot of money into it, I definitely think a single D20 mold is the way to go. And then you can always buy a slab mold after that if you have determined that you really like the hobby. I want to caution you against buying any of the wish molds or the molds on Amazon. They're going to make your life so difficult. You're going to think dice making is so much harder than it is, and you're not going to get good results. It's a waste of money. You're just going to be throwing away the cost of your materials. Next, you are going to need some kind of colorant. You can use a mica powder like these that I got from Mad Micas. I have linked some below that come from Maspring. It's a really great mica company where the mica is ethically sourced. Or as I said, you can use eyeshadow. If you have an eyeshadow palette that you don't like, use it. Start with what you have because you might end up hating this and you don't want to spend all that money. You could also get 
like some alcohol inks, like this one from Pixis. Alcohol ink is going to make your dice translucent, whereas the mica powder is going to make it opaque. I do think starting with opaque dice is really great for beginners though. I didn't mention it with the respirator because I am a glasses wearer, but if you do not wear glasses, I definitely recommend face protection. I used to when I cast, and unfortunately because of my glasses, it always fogged up the masks and I just couldn't see what I was doing. And the last thing you're going to want is a lighter to pop surface bubbles. If you just wanna see if you're going to love this hobby, then this is all you need. Oh, before I forget, I also want to mention a lab coat or clothes that will cover your entire body that you don't care about is also something that I would highly recommend. So if you have an old beat up hoodie that's going to zip up and like cover your wrists and stuff, that's fine. I use a lab coat because I make a mess and it covers everything. And I also recommend working in pants, jeans, again, something you don't care about. That's where we're going to leave this for now. I'm going to let you have a chance to explore some of the materials and see things that you might be interested in purchasing before you start trying to make dice. And when I come back next week, I'm going to do a deep dive into the different types of resins, the differences between them, and what you may or may not want to use getting started. If you have any questions about getting started with dice making, please leave them in the comments below, and I will be sure to answer as many as I can. That's it for now, and I will see you next week where we will talk about some of these materials a little more in depth.